Okay, so this is the story about how God showed me how to catch, well, gave me the, the evidence, showed me where to find the evidence that my ex-husband was cheating on me. So I got... I got married when I was 16 years old. My dad married me off at 16. I was very, very young, of course, that 16 is young. Um, and because I was so young, you know, so many people would say, oh, it's not gonna work, you know, it's not gonna last. And I really wanted my marriage to last. I felt like my dad threw me away like trash at 16. And my ex-husband married me and he was like my knight in shining armor. I, I loved him from my guts. I loved him, you know. Um, and so I was, let me see, got married at 16. When I turned I think I was like 17 years old or 17 and a half, somewhere around there. Um, we got pregnant and I was about three months pregnant or so. We had uh, gotten pregnant before, but I had a really bad miscarriage. I was like, four or five months and uh, the baby's heart, uh, they they couldn't find the baby's heart and, uh, and I had a really bad miscarriage. I had to go through the delivery and everything. So we were excited about this pregnancy. Um, so he had pledged a fraternity and because um, he was he was older than me, um, he was in college, and so he had pledged a fraternity, and they were planning on going on this trip, and it was like you know for the weekend or so, and so I was like, oh, you know, where are we going? <laughs> And he was like, "Oh no, this is a, this is a boys thing. This is this is a fraternity thing. Only only the frat brothers are going. You know, um, none of the females are going. No no females are going. Nobody's taking their wife or their girlfriend. So I'm like, uh, okay, all right. So he goes on his trip, and." something didn't sit right with me. Something didn't sit right with me. So when he gets home, I rush up to him at the front door before he even gets in the house and gets comfortable and I lay this big old sloppy wet kiss on him. I'm like, honey, you know, and just <laughs> And while I'm tonguing him down, I stick my hand straight in his front pockets, grab everything I feel, snatch it, and run upstairs. <laughs> so, so, I get upstairs to our bedroom and I close the door and I'm leaning up against the door. You know, I'm not letting him come in and I'm seeing what I, what I found. There's a phone number. There is a piece of paper, a torn off piece of paper with a female's name on it and a phone number. The phone number had an out of town area code. So he is on the other side of this door. Open the door! Open the door! He is going crazy. He is acting like a wild man. So 
So he forces the door open, or I open the door, I'm not sure anymore, it's a long time ago. So I'm like, who is this? Whose number is this? So he tries to grab it and I jump back. And so now I'm, <laughs> I run around the bed on the other side of the bed and like the bed was up against the wall. We had a small room. So anyway, the bed was up against the wall. So we came into the room one way and then I ran around on the other side of the bed. So this Negro comes around the bed. And he wrestles me to the floor about that number. And I'm hard headed. I take my arm and I stuff it all the way, all the way under the bed. You know, I'm trying to push my shoulder up under the bed. <laughs> you ain't getting this number. I'm calling her. And. He puts both his hands around my neck and starts choking me. And he's got this wild look in his eyes. I'm gonna tell y'all something right now. That's a demon. When you see that, when you see somebody you know and they got this wild look in their eyes, like you ain't never seen them looking like that they don't look like themselves. That is when they are possessed. And that is the demon. You can see it in the eyes. God told me that. Just giving y'all that. So anyway, he got this wild look in his eyes. And he just choking me. Like he don't know who I am. Like he's out of his mind. Choking me. And I was going to let him choke me till I, till I passed out. But then I thought about my baby. Yeah, because remember, I was pregnant. So I dropped the number underneath the bed. And then I showed him my hands. So that he could see that I didn't have the number anymore. He jumped up off me, flipped the whole bed over with one hand. Not like we had a heavy bed. It wasn't like no, you know, it was just a basic frame, box frame, mattress, and the, the little steel frame. It wasn't all that. But he flipped that daggone bed over with one hand and got that number and walked out. So I asked him after I, you know, stopped crying and got myself together and tried to process like what just happened to me. I was like, how could you do that to me? You know, I'm pregnant. He was like, I know you're pregnant. That's why I didn't hit you in your stomach. That right there, that was the death of our marriage. He didn't know it yet, but that was the end. I had to get myself together to the point where I could leave, but that that was the end of our marriage. Um, when he said that, I, I knew, I was like, you, you, handled me like that and you knew what you were doing. Yeah. I'm not having your baby. I got an abortion. Unfortunately. Hey, I'm sorry. I know y'all dragging me, judging me, mad at me. I'm mad at myself for doing that. I was young. I was stupid. But I did. I killed my baby. Because I couldn't see myself being attached to him for the rest of my life after he treated me like that.
over some strange female. And I, I loved him so hard. I loved him so fiercely. And for him to not love me back and to actually treat me like that, mm, I couldn't. I couldn't handle it anymore and I didn't want to be with him anymore and I didn't want to look at him anymore for the rest of my life. I didn't want to have a child with him. I didn't want to have to deal with, you know, dealing with him anymore. Cause it's, I don't know, it's like, I, I do, I, I love, you know, and I, I, I give my all, but um, if it comes to an end, it came to an end for a good reason and I'm not going back, you know, but if you, if you violate me like that, no, no, I don't want anything else to do with you. You know, I, I don't want anything else to do with you. That's just how I am. Believe it or not, me and him are very good. You know, we're, I'm not very good friends, but like, you know, uh, if I'm ever in town or whatever like that, you know, he he, he might want to have lunch with me or something like that. Like we're very we're very pleasant, very cordial, and and all that, and and always will be. But that love, mm, no, that was over. That was over. You can't treat me like you hate me, and then expect me to just, you know, get over it because I just couldn't yeah so that was that was the death of our marriage so anyway I told him I was like you must have cheated on me you know because why would you act like that anybody cheat on you you know just you just you just have to trust me. You just gonna have to learn to trust me. That's how he would talk to me. I couldn't figure out like, you know, what the hell was wrong with him? And um, I believed that it was his fraternity brothers. You know, I, I thought that it was them that they convinced him that because he was my first love that I wouldn't go anywhere so he could do whatever he wanted to do and I wouldn't you know I would stay and he did tell me that but there was a deeper reason um, that I won't go into but um, so we continued on like business as usual but for me it very much wasn't I made it my business to get rid of the baby that was the first thing. And then, um, cause I, did, I didn't, definitely didn't see how I was gonna be able to take care of myself. You know, I was real young. Anyway, um, I kept trying to, to figure out what was wrong with our relationship and how to fix it what was going on with him. So, I, you know, I was like, let's go to counseling. Let's do this. Let's do that. No, he didn't want to do none of that. We went to like one counseling session because it was like some pastor that was a, a frat member, of, you know, of his, a frat brother or whatever, but he didn't take it seriously and it didn't work. Anyway, I'm running around with this, terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach like i know he's cheating on me i know he's cheating on me i can't prove it don't have any evidence but i know he's cheating on me he said that phone number was nothing but i know he's cheating on me i just know it but i don't have any proof so in my mind i couldn't act which that was silly anyway because i i should have just left you know if you feel like that then you don't have any trust so you really don't have anything if you don't have any trust i don't care if i got proof or not you make me feel like 
something is going on or if I just get an inkling and, and I just can't get rid of it, you know what I mean? Then something's wrong with me or something's wrong with you, but it ain't gelling, it ain't working, it ain't clicking, it ain't going nowhere. So anyway, I'm running around with this feeling in the pit of my stomach and I can't get rid of it. And one day I come home from school. He's not home. He's at work. House is to myself. And I'm just looking around. I'm like, I know he's cheating on me, but I, and I hear this voice. Now, you know what? This, this is, I think this is the actual first time that I heard God's voice. Cause I had to have only been like 16 or 17. I definitely think that this, this is before the Tamika incident. Cause I was younger when I got married and the Tamika incident I think I was living back with my parents after I left my husband. So, yeah, I think this is the first time that I heard God's voice that I know of. Um, so, anyway, I'm at home and I'm having these thoughts. Like, I know he's cheating on me. I know he's cheating on me. And then bubbled up out of my gut, I hear this voice. And it said, if he's calling her, It'll be on the phone bill. Catch it. I was 16, 17 years. I was 16 years old when I left my father's house to get married. My father married me off at 16. That's another story. Um, and so I had never paid any bills. I, I I didn't know what a bill looked like. I had never opened a bill. I didn't know what a bill looked like. I didn't know, you know, how they were. And back then, this is way back in the day. This is like, um, this is like 1990, okay? So back in the day, phone bills, if you made long distance calls, long distance calls weren't free they charged you for each long distance call for how the length of the call and on the bill it would be itemized it would show the phone number the date the time of the call the duration of the call i had never seen a phone bill before i had never looked at a phone bill before i had no idea what was on a phone bill right so i hear this voice and it said if he's calling her it'll be on the phone bill I'm like, so I'm looking for, looking for a phone bill. And boom, there's a stack of fresh mail. There's a phone bill. I open up the phone bill. And in the long distance calls, there's that area code. Remember the phone number from the pocket with the girl's name on it? With the out-of-state area code, there's that area code. So, I called her. Silly as I was, I called her. And she answered the phone. And I was like, hello, is this blah, blah, blah. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, do you know so-and-so? And she was like, yeah. And I said, I'm his wife. And she was like, okay. And I said, did you guys sleep together? And she was like, yeah. Yeah. She started telling me, you know, all the deets of how they met and everything. And so I was like, would you mind? Could you could you hold on for one second, please? So she's like, sure. 
So then I went downstairs because my husband had gotten home. And I told him to pick up the phone. Because, you know, told you this is the 90s. So he's in the kitchen. There's a phone on the wall in the kitchen. <laughs> and I was upstairs in our bedroom. And there's a phone in the bedroom. You know, with cords and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So I tell him to pick up the phone. He picks up the phone. And I run back upstairs because I definitely want to hear this exchange. So I hear him and he's like, uh, hello. And she's like, hello. And he's like, who, who is this? And she was like, you know who it is. <laughs> you know who it is. And he was like, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. Shut up. Shut up. And so she just talking. She don't care. <laughs> he wasn't the boss of her. So he hangs up that phone and comes charging upstairs. And hangs up, snatches the phone from me and hangs up the phone. Um, yeah. And um, that's the story about that. <sighs> so, yeah, that definitely, after that, I did wind up leaving my first husband. And... Yeah, I think I should just wrap that story up there because the main thing of the story is just about a guy telling me where to find the evidence. Y'all don't need all them other details. If you want, if you want other details, if you want more stories, you know, let me know in the comments below. Uh, definitely subscribe. And I always got to plug my book. The Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. God delivered me from homosexuality after my first marriage. Um, there was a man, I got attacked by a different man. And I got, I just, I got scared of men. Um, and so I became gay. And while I was gay, I didn't want my girlfriends to cheat on me or leave me like my first husband did. So I figured if I became the best lover they ever had, that they wouldn't leave me. And it works. <laughs> yeah, so I used to make sure my girlfriends had at least 10 orgasms in under an hour. And so... Um, I just want to give those techniques to men um, just because there's a lot of women out there that are um, giving their whole selves, giving all their love and all their intimacy, and then not having orgasms. That's not fair. So, um, yeah, I give step-by-step -step instructions. Um, on how to easily elicit the female orgasm for men. And then if you're a woman and you have been intimate and married five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you ain't never had an orgasm, come on. Get this the, my audio book, The Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. That is unacceptable, honey. You deserve to be pleased too, okay? You give way too much to not get that back. That is crazy. So um, there's some things that you'll learn about your own body and how to work, you know, certain parts so that every time you make love, you can always have orgasms, okay? Orgasm, well, let's put orgasms on the table for girls, all right? <laughs> okay, so the link to the Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian is in the description. It's the Koji link. It's an audio book. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy it i definitely i have to laugh at myself like when i when i listen to it again just to get the edited you know edit the version up on koji and everything i have to laugh at myself you're going to enjoy it I, i'm a silly girl i'm crazy okay just get the book get the tips have a laugh all right and 
Just enjoy your life, all right? Enjoy your life. Okay, y'all have a beautiful day, night, weekend, morning, whatever time it is. Okay, bye.